A very good morning to Dr. Asma and all my fellow classmates. So we are from group two. This, mo this morning we are going to present on the topic of revenue cycle. First of all, before we proceed to our points, we will introduce ourselves. My name is Jennifer Jalawai Anak Jonathan, metric number 196514. My name is Tan Xin Yi, metric number 197177. Okay, hi, my name is Aliana Zahira Binti Muhammad Zaidi. My metric number is 197852. Hi, I'm Liu Bowie. My metric number is 195870. I will talk about the process in revenue cycle. There are five process in revenue cycle. First, the entity will receive the order from the customer either through sales with individual or companies. There are two types of sales, sales in cash and sales in credit. If the customer purchase in credit, the orders will be sent to the credit department to check for credit limit. Once the order has been accepted, the ship Ping department will start to pack the goods and ship it to the customer. When the customer receives their goods, invoice also will be sent it to the customers. Last, customer may start to make their payment when they receive the sales invoice. There are many documents involved in the revenue process. In the sales order process, the document needed is customer sales order. This document contains details of types and quantity of products or service ordered by the customer and customer information. This document prepared and forwarded by salesperson, mail or fax or internet to the customer. In the process of obtaining credit approval, credit approval form is needed. If the customer purchase on credit for, from the entity for the first time, the entity have a formal procedure for the credit worthiness of the customer. This procedure is to prevent the customer did not pay the debt in the future. And the amount of credit limit should be documented on the approval form. Once the entity have received the order, they need to do an open order report. This is a report of all customer order which the process has not been complete. After the order, has been asset, the shipping department will start to pack the goods and send it to the customer. Shipping document prepare every time when goods are shipped to customer. The document contains type and quantity of product ships and other relevant information. After goods has been shipped out and built, the order should be noted as filled in open order report. In the billing process, sales invoice is used to bill customer. This is the typically the source document that signals the recognition of revenue. Original sales invoice usually forward to the customer while copies are dis distributed to other departments within the companies. Sales journal. Once the sales invoice has been issued, the sales need to record in sales journal. This is used to record the necessary information of the sales transaction. Customer statement. This is a monthly statement that will mail to customer about their sales, cash receipts, and credit momentum transactions processed through the customer's account for the period. Account receivable subsidiary ledger. This ledger contains an account and details of the transaction with each customer. Age trial balance of account receivable. This is to summarize all the customer balance in account receivable subsidiary ledger used to monitor the collections of receivables. In the process of cash receipts or collections, remittance advice is a document forward to the customer when the, when the customer make their payment. Cash receipt journals record the entity's cash receipt. Credit memorandum, this used to record the credits for the return of goods in customer account or allowance that will be issued to the customer. Last document is write off authorizations. This document is prepared to authorize the write off of an uncollectable account. It is normally initiated in the credit department with final approval from the treasurer. Now I will pass it to my teammate. The next slide is on the general entries and accounts involved. As you can see on the table here, there are two columns 
which are periodic inventory, and the second one is perpetual inventory. The first transaction is involving cash sales. For the periodic inventory, the general entries will be debit cash and credit sales. As for the perpetual inventory, the general entries will be debit cash, credit sales, debit cost of goods sales, and credit inventory. For the second transaction, when it is involving credit sales, the general entries will be debit, account receivable, and credit sales. Why this credit sales um, debit account receivable is because this transaction is involving uh, the account receivable in, in the transaction. As for the second one, the the general entries for the perpetual inventory will be debit account receivable, credit, credit sales, debit cost of goods sales, and credit inventory. For the third transaction, when it is involving cash sales return, the general entries for periodic inventory is debit sales return and credit cash. As for perpetual inventory, the general entries will be debit sales return, credit cash, debit inventory, and credit cost of goods sales. The next one is the transaction on the credit sales return. The general entries, as you can see here, is when it is on the periodic inventory, the general entries will be debit sales return and credit account receivable. As for perpetual inventory, the general entries will be debit sales return, credit account receivable, debit inventory, and credit cost of default. Next is on the last transaction, when the transaction is involving cash disbursement. First, when it is involving the transaction in the periodic inventory, the general entries will be debit cash and, and credit account receivable. As for the perpetual inventory, the transaction, uh, the general entries will be debit cash and credit account receivable. Now we proceed to our next slide, which is on the account involved in revenue cycle. So, as you can see here, our first transaction is sales transaction. In this sales transaction, there are four accounts involved. First is a bad debt expenses. The second one is allowance for uncollectible account. And the third one is the sales. And the last one is the account receivable. Next, the second transaction is the cash receipt transaction. In this transaction, there are three accounts involved, which are cash, FR receivable, and cash discount. The next Transaction is on the sales return and allowance. In this transaction, there are three accounts. The three accounts are sales return, account receivable, and sales allowance. Next, we proceed to our next slide, which will explain on the flow chart for the video cycle. In this slide, you will find three figures. As you can see here, this is the first figure. The three figures you will find on the reference book on page 292 till 294. So as you can see here, from here, there are three departments, which are order entry department, IT department, and shipping department. As you can see here, under the order entry department, this is where the company get order from customer. They will get the order, the email, Fax or phone. When they got the when they get the order, they will proceed to production process. After that, from the order entry department, they will go to the IT department. In this department, is where the company obtain the data from the customer, from the customer, and after that, from the data, we go to shipping program. From the IT department, it will go to the shipping department. In this shipping department, when the company has approved the shipping ticket, as you can see here, should not be saying that the shipping ticket that is forwarded to the customer content quantity and price for each product purchase. After that, we go to customer with the goods that they have um, produced. Next is, as you can see here, the figure shows Two parts, which is the billing department and the IT department. Under the billing department is where the import is produced. After it has been produced, it will go to IT department. In IT department, 
it will go through the billing program and under the billing program it will obtain the information from the shipping transaction then to open order then open order after that the second is the account receivable asset after the billing program it will go to account receivable asset here the account receivable asset will obtain the information from the account receivable sales and remittance transaction after that and after it go through the account receivable asset it will go to account receivable reporting in this account receivable reporting there will be account receivable remittance transaction and shipping transaction happen also there will be general ledger will be provided here after that under this reporting the company will have to present on the money report and the customer statement to the group or corporate group. So for the next slide, which is the last slide, the last, not, not the last slide, the last figure on this slide is, uh, as you can see here, there are two departments, which is cash receipt department and IT department. In this cash receipt department, when the input is produced without uh, error and yeah, it will go to the IT department, the input will go to cash management subject. The cash management subject will get information from them. The bank will give the information on the remittance advice transaction, uh, account server and remittance advice transaction. After that, uh, it will, as you can see here too, in the cash receipt department, sorry, I forgot to mention here under the input, there is a column, I mean, the box on the reconciled by cash receipt club. From here, the bank will give the remittance price and it will pass to the reconciled by cash receipt club. Uh, uh, that's all on my part. Next, I will pass the next slide to the next presenter. Hi, I'm Bao Yi. Now I'll be presenting on identifying internal control involved in the learning process. In this internal control, it involves five components. The first one is the control environment. Auditor must understand the control environment, such as integrity and ethical values, commitments to competence. The understanding of control environment are generally gained on the overall entity basis. The second one is the entity risk assessment process. The auditor must understand how management conditions consider risks, estimates their significance, assess the likelihood of their occurrence, and decide actions to be taken. And the next one is the control activities. Auditors have to identify controls to ensure the accessions for transactions and events being made. And the fourth one is the information system and communications. Auditors need to obtain or generate and use relevant quality information to support functions of internal control. Internally communication information also needed to prepare estimations for accounts, such as allowance for uncollectable accounts and also the sales return. And the next one is the monitoring of control. Supervisory personal evaluation management assessments the design and operations of control prepared by the auditors. And for the next one, identify risk area in the cycle. There are two types of risk in this cycle, which is the control risk and inherent risk. For the control risk assessment, there are three major steps in setting the control risk in the revenue process. The first one is understand and document the revenue process based on the relevant strategy. The auditor needs to understand the five components of internal control, which I have mentioned in the previous slide. And for the second one, plan and perform tests of control on revenue transactions. Auditor needs to examine entities' revenue process to identify relevant controls to prevent or detect and correct material misstatements. The tests of control in revenue process include inquiry silence personnel, inspection of documents and records, observe operations control, walkthrough, and also the transformation. The third one is the stats and documents the control risk for the revenue process. The auditor needs to set a chief level of control risk. In the test of control in the revenue process, if it is supported plan level of control risk, the auditor needs to conduct plan level of substantive procedure for related accounts balance. If the 
test of control is not supported, support plan level of control risk, the auditor needs to set control risk at a higher plan level. And the, for, the next, for the next one is the inherent risk assessment. In this inherent risk assessment, it includes four factors. The first one is the industry related factors. The factors such as profitability, health, competition, rates of technological changes, and also governmental regulations. These type of factors will affect the sales activity and impact auditor's assessment for inherent risk. And for the next one is the complexity and contentiousness of revenue recognition issue. Risk of material misstatement will be high in revenue recognition due to the impact on cut-off point and also the accuracy assessment. And the third one is the difficulty of auditing transactions and account balances. Account for bad debts and sales returns may be hard to determine the proper value. And for the last one is the misstatements detected in prior audit, which is the misstatements in previous audit. It will result in misstatements in the revenue process. And now I will pass my presentation to my next member. Okay, hi, my name is Alia. I'm going to explain about important assertions and relevant audit procedures for this cycle. Okay, so uh, the first assertion is the occurrence. So occurrence uh, is actually, the meaning of occurrence is when we, when we receive all the revenues or the cash received from the transaction and event that have been recorded and have occurred okay, to the entity. So it means it's available in the entities, okay? And then what can uh, occur means what is possible misstatement that can happen. There is two possible misstatements, which is the first one is fictitious revenue and the second one is whether revenue are recorded, but the goods are not shipped or the goods are the service are not performed yet. So uh, for the fictitious revenue, what uh, internal control that uh, involved is the segregations of duties where the order and true functions are different from the billing functions. And then the test of control that can be done is observe and evaluate the segregation of duty. And also for the procedure, substantive analytical procedure, we can compare the data from the budgeted revenue report. And also for the substantive uh, test of details, we can use vouching techniques. Where vouching technique, we must ensure that the information in the sales invoice to customers' orders and shipping document are accurate as described. Okay, so back to the revenue recorded and uh, the, the second possible misstatement, which is revenue recorded, but the goods are not shipped or the service are not performed yet. The internal control that can uh, be done is the sales recorded only with a proof of customer's order and shipping document. That uh, it is a wise wheel, of course, uh, the internal control that can be uh, done. Okay, and then for the sales of control, we can test in the samples of this sales invoice of the present shipment. Uh, and then uh, the second internal control can, can be done for the possible statement is numerical sequence of document okay, based on the numeric sequence. Uh, numerical sequence. So of course, from the numerical sequence, we can do uh, testing test of control also. We can uh, test the samples of document okay, based on their numerical sequence. Example is sales invoice. Okay. So here, the management must be organized. Uh, okay. uh, so for the numerical sequence of document, uh, when the management takes that kind of intercontrol, there is no any audit procedure to be added up. But if you are take a, if you are using the uh, type of uh, internal control that you record only with the proof of customers or ownership in document, there is uh, more of the substantive analytical procedures where you must compare the data from the uh, ratios of sales which is in the prior year and then you also must check the details of unit ship with revenue and the production record so that is the procedure and then there's also a substantive test of detail which is uh, we must revoke synthetics also we must ensure that the uh, informations in sales invoice to customers and shipping document are accurate okay so next uh, accession is second assertion is completeness so uh, what is completeness? So completeness is where all revenue and cash received on the event or transaction have been recorded and should have been recorded and have been recorded. Okay, means it already complete. Okay, so what possible uh, misstatement that could happen? So possible misstatement that could happen is where the goods ship or are not uh, service, the service are not, where the good is shipped or the service is performed, but the revenue are not recorded at all. 
So that is a possible misstatement where it is complete by your side, but the revenue are not being recorded. So the internal control that can be uh, then is three, where the, you can, of course, you can use the numerical sequence of document, you, you can use that way. And then uh, the shipping document also can match to the sales invoice, okay? And then the sales invoice um, need to be reconciled daily with the sales report. So that is three uh, internal control that can be done. So of course, uh, you can use the test of control where you must, uh, if they're for the numerical sequence of document, you must test a sample of document for the numerical sequence. If there is for the shipping document must match the sales invoice, you must trace the shipping document Okay, to the sales invoice and sales units check one by one. Okay, because you are uh, matching between the shipping document and sales invoice, so you must uh, need to make sure that the it is um according to what it is. You know, it must it must be in uh in in match like it must be matching. Okay, so you must trace back using the sales units and sales invoice. Okay, so the third one, the third internal control is you must reconcile your sales invoice daily, okay, with the sales report. Of course, uh, the test of control that can be done is you check the samples of the daily reconciliation. You can uh, check the, the daily closure, disclosure of the sales invoice. Okay, uh, for the substantive procedure, only uh, shipping document that match to the sales invoice have their uh, procedure. And, Article procedures and the test of details where you must compare the data from the units they are shipped and the revenue and production records. And then for the test of details, you must trace back the shipping document, okay, which is the, the shipping documents to the sales invoice and sales units. Okay, like I said, it must be matching to make sure it is true and accurate and right. <laughs> okay, so then uh, the third assertion is authorization. So authorizations is uh, where all the revenues and cash received from the transactions or even are properly authorized. Okay, uh, when the possible misstatement that could happen is true. When the goods shipped for a customer who is not creditworthy or the shipments made at an unauthorized price or terms. Okay, so for the goods, uh, for the first possible misstatement where good is shipped for, the, for a customer, but the customer is not a creditworthy. What can be done for the internal control is process of credit authorization. So process of credit authorization, and second one, it can uh, of course uh, based on the obligations of duty, where the credit functions are different from the uh, billing functions. Okay, so uh, the test of control uh, that can be taken from the internal control is if you are using a uh, process of credit authorization, you can uh, test it uh, by Review, review entities, okay, review entities procedure of granting credit. Like uh, you must, of course, you must check about uh, the procedure when you want to give the credit. Okay, what is what is uh, hap happening uh, in there, the procedure when you uh, give the credit. And then second, you can examinations of, and then examinations of sales order for evidence of credit approval. I mean, like when you approve the credit approval, when you approve the credit, uh, what is happening? Is it proper? That's so why you must, uh, you can use that as an evidence. That's so why you must examine the sales order. Okay. And then uh, for this uh, possible misstatement, okay, uh, the second internal control that uh, you can take, which is the segregations of duty, which is the credit functions uh, differs from billing function. The test of control that can be done on this, you can observe and evaluate the segregations of duty. Okay, so for this, there is no uh, any procedure or analytical procedure that can be done. Okay, okay, and also we uh, also the substantive substantive analytical procedure and substantive uh, test of detail. Uh, there is. Uh, not available in this post, uh, in this statement. Okay, second, the possible misstatement that could happen on the authorization assertions is shipment made at the unauthorized prices or terms. So, internal control that can be done is um, we must have the authorized price list, price list and specify the terms of trade. Okay, it must be fixed so this kind of problem will not happen. So, the term just a control that can be done is we must compare the price on the terms on the sales invoice to the price authorized uh, to the authorized price list. So we must compare uh, both of these. 
Okay, uh, fortunately, this also don't have any substantive analytical procedure, but it have the substantive test of detail, which is on the transactions we where we must compare the data, we must compare the sales invoice to the authorized price list. Okay. So, okay, so the first session is accuracy. What is the meaning by accuracy? So accuracy is where the amount or the other data that are related to the transactions or event. Uh, must be uh, recorded appropriately. Okay, must be accurately uh, recorded. Lah. So what possible mistake that can happen? Okay, of course, the revenue recorded are uh, not in the correct amount. Where, uh, then the internal control that can be taken is uh, where the sales invoice agreed to the price and quantity of shipping document and sales order. And then the test of control that can be uh, taken is where we can examine the sales invoice uh, and then we can do the... Uh, uh, mathematical accuracy lah, we can uh, check again. So the substantive analytical procedure that can be done is we compare the data, which is uh, the data of the sales invoice to the uh, unauthorized to the authorized price list, and then substantive test of details. We can compute the information of sales invoice. Okay, and then for the uh, uh, fifth assertion, which, which is classifications. So what is the meaning of classification? Classification is when all revenue or cash received or in the transactions or events are being recorded in the proper account, are being classified in the right account. So definitely the possible mistake that could happen is when the revenue transactions are not properly classified. Okay, so the internal control, we can observe the chart of account. Now we can see the chart of account. There's a test of control that can be made. We need to review the sales journals and the general ledger. We need to review what is we need to detect the the, the incorrect uh things or the in, you know, the what is the problem in it. Uh. Okay, so there is no problem substantial analytical okay, so there is there is no substantive analytical procedure in here. And then uh, the substantive test of detail, we need to first of this transaction, we need to review the sales journals and the general ledger. Next for the last assertion, which is a uh, cutoff. Okay, so what is the meaning uh, of cutoff? Okay, cutoff is when all the revenue and cash receipt are being recorded uh, in a correct uh, counting period. Means you must uh, record all the event and transactions that happen in the current counting period. And then, uh, what is possible mistake when it could happen? Of course, the possible mistake when it could happen is you are uh, recording the revenue in the wrong period. So the internal control that can be taken is all shipping documents are forwarded to BD function daily or the daily billing of good ships. So first, if you uh, if the internal control is all shipping documents forwarded to function daily, the test of control that can be done is you must compare the shipping document to sales invoice. Okay. <clears throat> Second, the procedure is you must compare the revenue recorded for the short for period shortly after and before the other period. Of course, the substantive test of detail, which is the substantive test of the transactions, is you must compare the shipping document to sales invoice. Okay, for the second instrument control, which is daily billing of good ships, uh, you must compare the dates of sales invoice to sales journal, and then the procedure, substantive analytical procedure, you compare the revenue uh, that recorded for the period shortly after and before the audit period. And the test of details uh, for the transactions, you can compare the, which is what you do is you compare the dates of shipping document to sales invoice. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you uh, for listening to our presentations from group two about revenue cycle. So, so now is the Q&A session. If you have questions, you may ask now.